quite pull it off. It's all those statues and those priests and all that stuff that really gets them in trouble. And the Pope. And so, I, I, number one, I have serious issues with the source. If Now, there is, there is uh, something I read um, on this that um, the church, the Catholic church, excuse me, um, well, here's the Wikipedia article. Several historians have concluded that the prophecies are a late 16th century forgery. Spanish monk and scholar Benito Jerónimo Fejeu y Montenegro wrote in his uh, Teatro Critico Universal uh, in an entry called Purported Prophecies that the high level of accuracy of the alleged prophecies up until the date they were published compared with their high level of inaccuracy after that date is evidence that they were created around the time of publication. One theory to explain the creation of the prophecies put forward by the 17th century French priest and encyclopedist Louis Morere, among others, is that they were spread by supporters of Cardinal such and such in support of his bid to become Pope during the 1590 conclave. In other words, there's a little spurious history about all this, which may or may not be true. The problem is we weren't there. We didn't see him writing it or not writing it. Okay? So let me go to... Um, some of these some of these prophecies okay the 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 issue is is that Malachi wrote a list of um all the Catholic popes from his day forward till death do they part or whatever um he wrote he wrote a a cryptic name about them here's my problem already he wrote a cryptic name about them, and everybody's looking at it going. Oh my. That's like that's like dead on. He like figured it all out. It's like so true of this person. It's like Nostradamus talking about a guy named Hister. And I'm still waiting for a guy named Hister to show up. Who is Hister? Never met him. Never studied him in the history books. I don't know. And you're going, Pastor Mike, it was Hitler. Hitler come on. It was Hitler. No, it wasn't. He said Hister. And if you come at me, bro, with this idea of, well, that's how the Bible's written, I will say, absolutely not. God didn't have a speech impediment. God never got anybody's name wrong. When God gives prophecies, they happen exactly the way God says they're going to happen. Did they not number Jesus with the transgressors? What ambiguity is there about that? Did they not pierce his hands and feet? Did they not part his garment and cast lots for his vesture? Did they not spit on him according to scripture? Was he not thrown into uh, the tomb of a wealthy man according to... Was all of these things done at, uh, to Christ as he lived his life out? They were done exactly the way they were recorded in scriptures. Let me read some of this here. And let me show you what I mean. Let's go back. Uh, oh, let's see here. Let me. Uh, I'm gonna just. I'm not gonna read the whole list. There's. I don't know how many of them are there. Let's go to the mid 1800s. Uh, Malachi wrote uh, Pope number 101, and he wrote cross from cross. That's all he wrote. Cross from cross. Well, the Pope of that era was uh, uh, Pius the Ninth, Giovanni Maria Mastai Ferretti. And the Wikipedia article says during his pontificate, the House of Savoy, whose coat of arms is a white cross. <gasps> See, it's got cross on it. On a red background, reunited Italy and stripped the Pope of his territorial possessions. Pope Pius the Twelfth, uh, commenting on the beatification process of Pius the Ninth, used the words per crescium ad lucem through the cross to light. So they're saying, see, it's got like a cross on it. So that that's it right there, cross from cross. Eh, I don't know. Let's look at the next one. 102. Light in the sky. Now, this is what Malachi said was going to be this pope. Light in the sky. Okay? Uh, this would have been Pope Leo XIII. Um, Giacchino Pecci. And his coat of arms had a shooting star. Ooh. 
Okay. Uh, the next pope, burning fire. That's like, that's like the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. It's like saying fire, fire. Fire burns. So he called him a burning fire. Duh. St. Pius X, Giuseppe Sarto. Pius advocated the codification of canon law, daily communion, and the use of Gregorian chant in the Catholic liturgy and was an opponent of modernism. So that makes him, so then he fulfilled burning fire? No, I don't buy it. Um, 104, religion destroyed. Religion destroyed. Pope Benedict the uh, 15th um, reigned during, during but had no influence to stop World War I. This unprecedented period of violence was mainly fought between the Christian powers of Europe, destroying empires which had lasted centuries and began the worldwide spread of atheistic communism. I don't, I don't buy that one either. Religion destroyed. Didn't happen. It did not happen. Um, here is, let's go to the next one. Intrepid faith. Pius XI established Vatican City as a sovereign country with the papal office as head of state. Intrepid faith. I mean, I don't see it. Uh, angelic shepherd. Uh, Pope Pius the Twelfth. Uh, He's supposed to be the angelic shepherd. Reigning during World War II, who is reported to have co covertly helped many Jews escape extermination and the Holocaust, though his role continues to be fiercely debated, said to have received visions, some of which have yet to be revealed. I don't, it's, I don't see it. Uh, here's another one. Uh, John the 23rd. He was supposed to be, according to Malachi, shepherd and sailor. Shepherd and sailor. That's what he was supposed to be. Pope John the 23rd was the patriarch of Venice, a maritime city. So is St. Louis. So is New York. So is San Francisco. And these were around at, at you know in these times. Pope John the 23rd, he could have come from St. Louis. We are a maritime city. We got the Mississippi River here. San Francisco, New York, Jersey, uh, Miami, Florida. Um, um, Rio de Janeiro. I mean, you just pick pick a city anywhere in the world. He was patriarch of Venice. So what? Flower of Flowers is the next one. Oh, this sounds good. Giovanni Battista Enrico Antonio Maria Mantini, Pope Paul the Sixth. He is supposed to be the Flower of Flowers. His coat of arms featured the fleur de lis. Big deal. The St. Louis flag has the fleur de lis on it. New Orleans flag has the fleur de lis on it. Uh, number 109, from the midst of the moon, from the midst, from the middle of the moon, John Paul I, Albino Luciani, the Pope who lived 33 days and was murdered. His month long reign began with, with the moon half full. And see, this is what you have to do. You have to, since you, you, you can't, you look at his life, you look at his crest, you look at his birthday, you find out who his second cousin was, you find out where he liked to eat lunch. I mean, you look at everything in the world and you go through like 4,000 different things until you find something that matches. I don't buy it. I don't, it doesn't look right to me. I don't see here that Pope John Paul I, and if you want to talk about what remarked or what was remarkable about his reign, the fact that he was, he was never supposed to be Pope. This guy was like 40,000th on the list. The Cardinals had been fighting for, you know, days and days and days, and they couldn't pick a Pope. And they finally grabbed him out of the, out of the pile and said, can we, just, can we just elect him and get it over with? And they did. And then he's, he finds out about the banking scandal and the Freemasons. And according to uh, Malachi Martin, he finds out about the uh, Luciferian initiation that took place in 63 after John the 23rd. And historically, we know for a fact that he was going to fire the Secretary of State of the Vatican. Among some other people, he had it all written out at night. He was going to do it the next day, and he's dead in his sleep. Why didn't, if Malachi, if St. Malachi was so hot to trot on this stuff, why didn't he find that out? 
Instead of just saying, from the midst of the moon. Um, the next one, from the labor of the sun. Don't know what that means. Karol Wojtyla, the Polish Pope. Uh, born uh, 18th of May, 1920, on the day of a solar eclipse. Oh, a solar eclipse. Oh, okay. From the labor of the sun. It's got the sun in it. Big whoop. Big whoop. That's nothing. That would be like, that would be like the Bible prophesying. Uh, and the only prophecy of Jesus would say he's going to be born somewhere on the earth. Big deal. Um, and then, of course, after Jean Paul II, you have uh, Pope Benedict Arnold. No, Benedict. Benedict uh, Joseph uh, the Nazi Ratzinger. I mean, why didn't Malachi say... Uh, Ratzinger was going to be a follower of Hister. Why didn't he say that? Benedict the, let's see, XVI, 16th. He is to be the glory of the olive. The glory of the olive. Chose the renal name Benedict after St. Benedict of Nursia, founder of the Benedictine order. The order's crest contains an olive branch. Yeah, but it also contains uh, a key contains what looks like a seashell and a bunch of other stuff too why didn't they what big deal an olive branch so what since 1960 one of uh, currently 20 congregations in the benedictine confederation has been the olivetans whose name ultimately derives from the mount of olives in the new testament notably pope benedict is personally unaffiliated with the in other words he was not a benedictine he was not of the olivetan order he just happened to have an olive branch in his crest, and he's the glory of the olive. And so now we get into, now we get into Petrus Romanus. And here is, here is a, a, a serious, serious flaw now that I have with this, with this whole stuff. Here is the prophecy according to St. Malachi. In the extreme persecution of the Holy Roman Church... Stop right here. Show me. Show me anywhere where the Roman Catholic Church is under extreme persecution. Show it, show it to me. They're not being persecuted here in America. In fact, the Vatican has so much control over this country that before Hussein and um, the Mormon can get elected president, both of them had to sit down and crack jokes um, with, uh, who is that, the Archbishop of New York. They both have to sit at his feet and, and kiss his ring in order to get elected. You've got to do that. You've got to get the Catholics on your side. They're not being persecuted here. They run the country. And I, and I just, I, I think you need to, I think you need to seriously think about whether we're going to put any stock in this or not.